so I'm going to introduce Pombi Mind today, a fair workflow enabled POM base in the cloud. Um, this was a collaboration between Intermine and the Department of Genetics at the University of Cambridge and POM base in the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Cambridge. I have to say um, most of the work was actually done by Daniela Butano and Rachel Lyne. So they're the people who should have the credit for this. Um, so basically, Intermine is a platform to integrate and access life sciences data. Um, there are more than it was begun in 2002, and there are now more than 30 Intermine inst instances around the world. So Intermine provides um, loaders for common data formats. Uh, they provide custom parsers for novel data formats. There's a sophisticated query builder. And then they also provide te templates for predefined queries because queries can be quite complicated to configure. And then there are client libraries to generate code from queries. Um, a list of the registries uh, here. Uh, Pombase is the model organism database for the fission use. It's Saccharomyces pombi. We also integrate molecular data mainly by curating from the list. We have 300,000 curated ontologized statements, mainly for gene ontology terms, phenotypes, and modific protein modifications. We also have a very active community who contribute to the curation, around 25% of our curation now comes from the community. And we're currently the only major model organism database without an Intermine instance. So the work that was done for this project, uh, the models need to be extended to allow for new data types. Uh, all the data was mapped to the existing Intermine core model. A cloud contract and instant was set up um, with the CS, CSC at the UBI. All the interface tools and templates were configured to um, make the pre-composed queries and configure the web interface. And then we've done quite a lot of troubleshooting over the past few months, iteratively populating the model. Uh, a lot of, of Intermine bug fixes because we were one of the first users of the new Blue Jeans interface. And We've improved quite a lot of the POM based curation in the process, particularly allele curation and some disease gene curation, and improved the data modeling. So, the data that was loaded includes uh, sequence and features, um, gene ontology terms, and annotation extensions, phenotypes uh, with their alleles, conditions, and penetrance information, protein families and domains author logs that includes manually curated sets of author logs for human and budding use gets Saccharomyces cerevisiae, in addition to author logs for other species from panther, uh, disease associations and genetic and physical interactions. So there was us to summarize the impact for Pombi Mine for RIs and EOSC. Uh, Pombi Mine, which Pombase, which is currently uh, an Elixir node service, their users will benefit, our users will benefit from web services and client libraries to enable fission use data to be used in analytical workflows. Um, POM-based gene lists can now be sent directly to Intermine. And Intermine will provide, provides new ways to query data that we didn't have within pom -based. One will be to be able to query allele information and also to be able to query gene ontology annotation extensions. It also provides direct access to enrichment tools. I know there are many enrichment tools out there, but actually having them uh, immediately accessible is a really big advantage, and especially for phenotype enrichment, which is uh, less available. We also have the potential for elevated interoperability with other Elixir resources, for instance, all the resources that are in other mines like Flarnine. For Intermine themselves, this was a really useful exercise to test the software as a service model for other potential cloud Intermine instances and provide a scalable solution to manage increasing volumes of data. 
So what we still need to do for this project, um, finalize the go annotation and extension query configuration, add modification data, migrate to a permanent URL. This should be done in the next few days. Automate the update pipeline and publish the manuscript, which is in progress. Um, experience of working in EOSC life and technical teams. There were quite a few interactions, first off with the WT2, WP2 tools and operability. Um, we interacted with jean Karim Henrich and Antonio Rosato early on in the project for advice on Docker implementation. We later interacted with WP7 for the cloud deployment, deployment support uh, with just in case Clark Casey, who advised on the allocation resource process, and Alvaros Gonzalez, who provided Daniela with some training and good support for the cloud deployment. And we also had some interaction in the middle of the project with Jean-Marie Burrell, uh, who did a proof of principle and created a workflow notebook for connecting human mind and the image data resource, which is here, if anybody's interested. We didn't do that for vision use because there isn't really very much Pombi data. There's only one data set in the image data resource. So Pombi mining use, uh, I've put here, this, this is the URL I'm using today. Next week it will be here and I've got a recorded demo for later, but I'm going to be brave and do a live, quick live demonstration to indicate the sort of things that you can do. So if I make this full screen. So this is the home page for the cloud instance of Pomirai, an integrated resource for Pombi Genomics. There's a basic search box here that you can search for things like genes and ontology terms, authors, publications. But most people are going to want to use Pombi Mind to do um, more complex queries. Now, um, so building queries is actually quite complicated. So we provide quite a lot of templates, but what you can do here, so users can upload their own lists. This is very useful for X. For instance, they can just upload the, the results of an experiment. The lists they upload will be here. I'm going to, this is one I prepared earlier. I'm going to use in a second. And so you can save the results as lists and export them and import them into other queries. So under the templates, we've currently got around 26 queries configured. These are all grouped by category. So today I'm going to do a disease query. Uh, this is using the Mondo disease ontology, which we've mapped Pombi orthologs of human disease genes to. Uh, it's configured to Cornelia de Lange syndrome but you can edit these for any disease of interest. So I'm gonna use DNA repair diseases. So you can see here, I've got a results preview and <clears throat> excuse me, I can view all 74 rows of the results of the query in this table. I can see the top 10 rows here. Um, so you can see here, I've got 74 rows, but this actually only refers to 38 genes because some genes are annotated to multiple disease terms. Over here, we also have the enrichment. So you see the gene ontology enrichment for any list. Satisfyingly, this is highly enriched for DNA repair, 35 of the 38 genes, the three that are misannotated are actually problems with the disease ontology, which have been reported. Uh, we can see the phenotype enrichment, also enrichment for um, phenotypes related to DNA repair or DNA damage sensitivities. So as well, so these little graphs at the top of each column allow you to filter from the contents of the column. I'm going to filter here on Fanconi anemia, which is the um, most represented DNA damage term, and I can filter to get a shorter list. So now I've just got nine symbols in here. So each one of these is associate genes is associated with Fanconi anemia. Um, I um, can save the list, which I've done earlier. You saw that, so that's those nine genes there. So what I'm going to do now 
is go back to the templates. Um, back to template. Um, I'm going to import these results into a phenotype query, which will give me genes to alleles and phenotypes. So I'll select this query. This query is configured by default just to search on a list of two genes. You can add comma separated genes, but you could also import a list and I'll choose the list that I created. I can see here, so for these nine genes, I've got 402 phenotypes associated with these nine genes that are involved in the human orthodox involved in Franconi anemia. Again, we can see the enrichment. The enrichment has got a bit more specific. So now we're enriching on double strand rate repair and more terms related to DNA recombination. Um, useful filters here. I can obviously, I can filter on specific phenotypes. But I can also filter on types of alleles. So for instance, here, if I'm interested in, um, Human, if I'm looking, looking to see, for instance, if there are variants that have been created in fission use that might relate to human disease variants, I might be less interested in deletions and more interested in specific targeted mutants. So I can filter on these, which reduces the number of rows to 62. And here I can see the allele descriptions of the various um, targeted alleles. So um the only other thing I wanted to show here I think is there are lots of other tools available so things like chromosomes if we scroll down on every list page in addition to the enrichments we also have chromosome distribution we have an easy m viewer which is just um basically a um wrapper around cytoscape and we have um Go term, we have a different view of the go term data. So, for instance, here you can see the percentage of the total number of annotations that are associated with a term. So, here we've got three genes, that's 23% of the total, which are annotated to double strand break repair synthesis via dependent strand annealing. Um, so, yeah, those are the tools. So, that was really all I wanted to show in the demo um, and to say that any queries that our community want, we will then add new templates. So uh, I think that was it. Thank you. Uh, hope I was in time. Stop my sharing. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions about, um, and if not, I'll, I can start off. And you can uh, raise your hand or put them in the chat, I think. And I was sort of wondering how your user community is interacting with that and if they are seeing any differences given the, the new infrastructure or if it's just an extension of, of how it was working before. Sorry, I missed the very first part of the question. Ah. So what's, what's the user response to this? Are you breaking up? Sorry. Oh, no. Give me a sec. I think that the question was, what, what, what's the user okay. response to, um, can you hear? Well, yeah, I can. We haven't yeah. announced to our users yet. So um, that will happen hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We were waiting for the permanent URL, which we should have tomorrow. We were sorted out yesterday, but actually we didn't want to touch anything before the demo. So. Uh, it will hopefully be announced to the users next week, but really this will just provide them with a bit of extra functionality. They can do a lot of gene-based queries in POM-based, but what they can't easily get at is lists of alleles for... There's, there's a little bit more information that a super user could extract from the table, but also particularly the end access to enrichment tools will be really useful without having to do a lot of faffing around with your gene list. And for phenotype enrichment, we don't. We only have one place that people can do that previously. But to be able to just seamlessly send your list to Intermine and see the enrichment immediately will save people a lot of time. So um, yeah, there, there is quite a bit of extra functionality and the API for anybody 
who needs to use it. We, we've never had a lot of requests for that, but we have the occasional user that does need it. So there'll certainly be a group of people that will be satisfied by that. Thanks, Val. I'm, I'm going to take one question from the chat, um, which uh, is from Jean-Marie Burrell, which is, if I can, if I get it right, Pombase and Pombi mine need to be kept in sync. How do you do that? Um, we just plan on having regular updates. We're talking about monthly, mm -hmm. which is probably more than most model organism databases update, but we, we update Pombase every single night. So we do daily updates. We don't plan to do that for Intermine. We think it would be, it'd be too much work. So we thought we would settle for when we do a we do an actual monthly official release and we'll probably try to align with that data set. Brilliant, thank you Val. There's a few questions in the chat and a discussion also going on with Daniela that you might want to have a look at. I think we'll move on to keep to time. Thank you very much for the presentation. It's really exciting to see this come to fruition. All right, we will 